All right, let's do this. Quick tip, maybe. I don't know. Let's see how fast I can turn this around. Unscripted, unrehearsed, no audience. I'm only wearing one shoe in the middle of filming another video. I'm doing a two cycle engine rebuild. Not gonna get into this now. You'll see this video in a week or so if the bike starts when I'm done with it. I'm trying to measure my cylinder wear, not my underwear, the wear in my cylinder. I'm using a telescoping bore gauge, maybe sometimes called a snap gauge. I think a snap gauge is something different. Telescoping bore gauge and a micrometer, of course, like you do. You'll see this in action in the engine video. I'm not gonna get into this here, but this particular set of brown and sharp bore gauges is and always has driven me absolutely bonkers. It's high time we did something about that. First, let's reconvene at the other side of the bench because standing on this side just feels unnatural. This disgusting old set I've had forever. I must have gotten these for my third or fourth birthday. I don't even remember. They are made in the USA, unless by that they mean like the vinyl cover is made in the USA. The tools themselves have absolutely no branding whatsoever. I have to be honest, these have served me relatively well. They've seen a lot of use over the years and the actual telescopic mechanism feels pretty good. Let me show you with a bigger one. These are spring-loaded pins. They fit into a bore. You lock the handle on the back, and then you could measure across those pins, usually with a micrometer. I guess you could use a ruler or a yardstick or calipers. The idea is to transfer a dimension from inside of a feature you can't get with your measuring tools to someplace you can, like the anvils on this telescopic gauge. However, one thing I've never liked about these is the lock itself. It always seemed like you had to tighten them way too hard to get reliable and repeatable measurements. If it wasn't locked hard enough, the anvils could creep or your micrometer might start closing these down as you're trying to take your measurement, which is a bad thing. So not too long ago, maybe 10 years, I treated myself to a genuine set of brown and sharps. First glance, these things are pretty nice. Unfortunately, in practice, it was nothing but frustration. I've already fixed a couple of these. That's what I plan to share with you, but almost all of them are crunchy. I don't know if you can hear what I'm feeling. They're not silky smooth. The lock seems to work good enough, but now my frustrations have flipped end for end. Frankly, I was a bit let down. I'd always reach for these when I needed board gauges. I mean, they're my brown and sharps. I'd try to take two measurements and just pull out the old set. But like I said, I've decided to do something about them. I think the underlying problem is they're just poorly deburred. Let's work on this big one. The parts should be easier to see. Before we tear into this, a couple of things should be aware of. Surprise shooting spring threat here is extremely high. Parts are spring loaded in like six different directions. As a corollary to that, make sure your workspace is clean. Sweep up your floor. You're going to be looking for a small spring sooner or later. If you got one of those fancy garages with carpet, tear the carpet up. Second, I don't know what any of these parts are called. So if it sounds like I'm making something up, I probably am. Start in the back with the screw break em a bob The holdy part on these brown and sharps unthreads from the head. I haven't tried my other set, but I'm gonna guess they all do. If yours doesn't, look for some kind of spring clip or some other way that this thing is held in. These two spring-loaded pins are held captive. You can't pull them out. And this handily bit is the thing that's holding them in. Put them in a vise with some soft jaws, rubber urethane. This is probably sticking out more than it needs to, but I wanna be sure you can see what's going on. Use your judgment. We're trying to break the thread locker or whatever they have in there without bending the handle. Don't unscrew it all the way. Hold the plungers while you unscrew the handle. One of the two may try to take your eye out. Inside, you should find a little spring-loaded pin. That pin is what keeps the anvils from shooting out. Inside there's a spring and a spring guide. Anyway, put those aside for now. The problem seems to be in only these four of the five parts. The plungers nest inside of each other. There's a slot in the larger one and sort of like a key seat in the smaller one. And this little pin goes through the through slot and into the key slot. This is what sets the drag on the plungers and what locks them in place. The problem seems to be a very poor job in deburring these parts. Hopefully you can make out just how ragged that slot is, both on the floor and on the walls. Same thing goes for the mating part. There's like sharp burrs down on the inside diameter of that. On top of that, 
the surface finish on the end of this pin probably isn't helping the cause. I'm not sure if that's how it looked right from the factory or if it just chewed itself up inside these razor sharp slots. To a lesser extent, the inside diameter, the leading edge of the inside diameter on the T part, and the outside edge on these two plungers is also very sharp. So you can imagine as these things wiggle, they tend to bite into each other and onto the ID of this whatever it's called. So bottom line, we need to do what Brown and Sharp failed to do, properly deburr these parts. I just worked through them one at a time with an assortment of abrasive stones. I have this diamond file. It's just a little bit easier to get into with that sharp edge, but really just a good stone or any stone. You just slowly clean up those edges. I've also broken the edge on the OD. I mean, a little more elegantly than this, but I'm just trying to get the point across. And on the larger plunger, to get to the inside, this is a stone for a Dremel. I think for sharpening chainsaws or something. I don't know what they sell them for. They're worthless for that, but they're perfect for this. I'm just putting some pressure up into the bottom of that through slot. These parts are so sharp. Deburr those until you're happy or you've given up. Then, very important, thoroughly clean these parts. Wash them in alcohol. Get a Q-tip in there. Blow them with some air. You do not want to leave any abrasive particles in there. Once you're done and you're sure they're clean, give them a very light oiling using some very light machine oil, instrument oil, sewing machine oil, whatever you got, very light stuff. And your telescopic bore gauges should feel silky smooth. That could probably still use some work. It's unfortunate we have to do these kind of things to premium tools, but hope that saves someone's sanity out there. Hope you're all staying safe and healthy. I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.